Oaxaca. 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 Over the last year, we have spent four months in Mexico, and everyone we meet speaks so highly of Oaxaca. That's right, Oaxaca is supposed to be the most culturally diverse state in all of Mexico and the culinary capital of the entire country. We're so excited to be here exploring for the first time, and we're just going to take you along with whatever we do over the next couple days. <laughs> That's right, we're Eric and Sarah, and we're going to be living in Oaxaca for the next month. So if you want to see more of Oaxaca, then subscribe. Let's get to it. We're starting off in Centro, which is obviously the most touristy part of Oaxaca City, but it's really cool because it has this pedestrian-only street that stretches for a really long way, and it kind of just has all these beautiful churches and buildings all along the stretch, so it's a really good place to start in Oaxaca to just kind of get a feel for the vibe of the city. <laughs> church looks so beautiful from the outside we just had to go inside and it, wow it is beautiful everything is just decorated so nicely and it's actually just beautiful all the gold trim and everything it's wow amazing first thing you'll notice as we're walking down these streets is just how artistic and colorful Oaxaca is everybody is just selling something that they made and it is so beautiful and it's just a really cool expression of culture here. You might also notice a theme with a lot of the art is with skulls and bones and kind of Halloween colors and that is because Day of the Dead is coming up and Oaxaca City is apparently one of the best places to experience it. And we're gonna be here for that <laughs> so we're so excited. This has been a bucket list thing totally. for a long time so make sure you subscribe because we'll be making a couple of videos from that exciting festival. That's right. I just gotta say I love how colorful it is here. I just love being in cities that are so vibrant and colorful. I find at home in Canada, everything's just so beige and neutral color, you know? But I just love being in a place that there's just so many decorations and everything's colorful. It just makes me so happy. Happy Sarah. <laughs> Lost seeing all the people. Yeah, I cannot <laughs> believe how busy it is here. This is one thing that really surprises about Oaxaca is it is so busy and so touristy. I mean, even with just like Mexican tourists, but this is a Monday and there are so many people here. We thought maybe filming on a Monday would be really quiet, but it's crazy. Is this normal? Yeah. Huh? Must be. Must be. It is so warm, we need to get some paletas. <laughs> now to find a place to sit. <laughs> it is insane here right now. I don't know what's happening. This is crazy. I don't think this is normal at all. There's gotta be something going on. But this is wild. Zoclo is packed. Let me sit right over here. Can't fit. That's okay. <laughs> Might need your help with these. <laughs> you look so big compared to everyone. I know. I feel like I'm like not allowed to be sitting here. I feel I like know. there's something going on and like... We can just walk to a side street maybe. Yeah, okay, let's do that. <laughs> there we go. I got the nice chocolate one with some sprinkles. I got strawberry. Mm. Oh, that's so good. This is necessary. It's so hot. The best time, I mean, the morning and the afternoon is actually really, really mild. Once you get to the heat of the day here, it does get quite warm. Yeah. Although I will say on a normal day, the Zocalo is really nice because there's so many trees. So it's a great place to come and sit in the shade. Just not on a day when whatever today is happening. Whatever's happening today. Yeah. <laughs> Can't 
come to Oaxaca without trying a bunch of different food. You actually can't even talk to anybody about Oaxaca without almost immediately talking about how good the food is here. So we're here at Casa Taviche and we are trying out Tlayuda, which is basically just a big tortilla with baked beans, cilantro, and cabbage in it. And then we also get this big beef flank on the side. This is supposed to be a very typical Oaxacan meal. We haven't That's tried right. it yet, so. I'm excited to try it out. It looks delicious. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, what do you think the move is here? Just take a big bite with, with the meat on top? Probably not, but <laughs> you can go for it. What's the move here? Do I? Probably use a fork and knife that you gave us and like take a little bite of each. Fine, I'll be civilized for once. <laughs> Wow, that was very good. I don't think I've ever eaten like Mexican food with cabbage. Yeah, that's kind of true. It's very interesting. Ooh, although Pozzoli kind of had some cabbage in it, That's didn't right. It? Wow, this is super good. Mm. I feel like Mexico just can't miss with food, you know? I feel like Mexican food in general is amazing. Oaxacan food so far has been very good. Graceful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is kind of difficult. Not the easiest thing. Still better than you, though. It's very good. I wonder if we're supposed to eat the meat on the side, though, because it's kind of interesting having like really chewy meat. I kind of wonder if they're like a separate thing that just kind of go together, or if it's actually supposed to. I don't know, you're supposed to eat yeah, it together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like normally if you have a quesadilla with meat, it's like diced up and stuff. So it's just a different texture, but this is so good. I love the beans in here, so good. And yeah, we're gonna be in Oaxaca for a while and we're gonna be making a full food tour. So if there's things that we have to try, please leave us a comment because we wanna try all the delicious foods that are here. Our server is so sweet here. She literally just dropped off some like mole for us to try and we haven't even tried mole yet. We we're actually gonna save it, but we got some mole to try. <laughs> what type of mole? Oh yeah, it's mole <laughs> de champulin, which is grasshoppers. <laughs> it's made out of grasshoppers. Mm. Whoa. Is it good? That's super good. Wow, that tastes incredible. It's like spicy too. Is it like chocolate? Uh, no, it doesn't. Is it mole like chocolate? No, mole has like a bunch of different spices in it. Mm. Um, sometimes it tastes a little chocolatey, I think, but there's like seven different types of moles. But like this one is very, very good. Mmm. Oh yeah. Right? That's really good. I want that on everything. Yeah, I know. Gotta try them moles, folks. You would never know there's grasshoppers, other than like the legs in here, you know? You can see their antennas every so often. Gross, no, we can't. <laughs> that's not, that's a lie. Eric looked though. You would never be able to tell. <laughs> you looked. You thought I was being serious. Gotcha. You got me. This is the market Benito Juarez. We've never actually walked through here before, but it's huge. And it seems like it has everything you need from food to clothing to just anything. So we're just gonna explore for a little bit. It smells so good. <laughs> it's not, not spicy. Not spicy. Oh my what are you trying? Look at this thing. That's a straight up grasshopper. <laughs> Why are you trying it? Okay, well this is actually like a delicacy here in Mexico, especially here in Oaxaca. Apparently in the 16th century or before the 16th century, 
This was one of the biggest sources of protein for Mexicans. Before animals were domesticated. Before animals were brought in. But my goodness, let's let's just try it out. Look at his little face. Oh my goodness. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. It's like. I mean, luckily there's a lot of spices on it, but. I just ate a buck. That's my first buck I've ever eaten, I think. <laughs> was it a lot of legs? It was a lot of legs, but it was good. It, honestly, it didn't taste like dirt or anything, so that's good. <laughs> okay, oh, gracias. Okay. Oh my goodness. You gotta try it. I do not it. love this. I don't even like seafood because it's just so crunchy and there's all these shells. Okay, ready? Oh wow, that's delicious. It's not bad, right? Yeah, and it's not like hard. It's like the legs are soft somehow. They almost taste like, I don't know, like leaves or something. Wow, they're actually really good. If they, if you can see their like eyes and their legs, I would definitely eat more of those. <laughs> good morning. Today we are on our way to Monte Alban ruins. We are going early in the morning because that's when everybody has told us to go to beat the crowds and the heat. <laughs> and the weather is looking a little questionable. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about the so heat. So <laughs> I'm really hoping it doesn't rain because we are so unprepared if that happens. <laughs> but we're gonna catch a Colectivo to get there, so we gotta go find one. <laughs> I think it's one more, isn't it? Yeah. I think it is one more. Got the tickets. <laughs> we uh, totally got lost <laughs> trying yeah. to find a Colectivo. We had the wrong address. It was just the whole schmoz. It's the only time I've been thankful that things run on Mexican time because it's like 9.05 and we're still walking to the box that leaves at 9, so we're gonna make it. Oh, I'm sweating now. Yeah. Though. Stressful, and the box wasn't even where it's supposed to be. Hola. Hey, hay un bus a la... A la nueve. Donde? Oh, yeah? Okay. What is happening? <laughs> that bus is being cleaned. It obviously leaves at a different time. I, maybe this bus left already. The lady called them. Ugh. Look, we found the actual bus. <laughs> <laughs> chaotic. So chaotic. Isn't that what travel's all about, sir? Yeah, I just forgot how fun buses in Mexico were. <laughs> So what's cool about these ruins is they're only about 10 kilometers from the center of town, which is kind of unusual. I feel like normally ruins are pretty far out of town. So it's great because it's really easy to take a bus, but you can also easily taxi from uh, Oaxaca or you can take a tour, of course. Welcome to Monte Alban. The biggest thing you need to know about Monte Alban is that this is one of the most important pre-Columbian cities in Mexico. There's actually evidence that they were trading with Teotihuacan, where we were earlier this year near Mexico City. It was actually inhabited by two different groups, the Zapotecs and the Mixtecs at different times. And it's also just very beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> this is incredibly beautiful. Look at this. Look at it. You seeing this, Eric? I'm, I'm looking at Are it. Are you looking at yeah, it? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Are you seeing it? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Don't you just love big tour groups there? Yeah, that's why we came early, <laughs> to avoid that, exactly. <laughs> One thing that always kind of surprises me walking around ruins is just how much open space there is between all the temples and buildings. Like, I don't know if it means that there was other structures here before, but they just didn't last, or if this was just the place that people would walk around and when there's that many people, it would be full. I don't know, but it's just like there's always so much expansive space in between all the big structures. So, yeah, just always kind of interesting to I me. I imagine that there would be like markets and yeah. stuff here. I feel like that's like temporary be. structures. Yeah. yeah. But all, what about all the like regular people's homes? Like all the royalty have their big houses. Kind of like on houses. the sides of the, but still. Yeah, yeah we've I mean, seen some of them, but they cool. all seem like they were kind of royalties' homes. So you kind of wonder maybe they lived in the middle here, which is non non permanent structures, I guess. I don't know. If you know anything about this, let us know. 
Time to go into this really short door. <laughs> Perfect size for you. <laughs> yeah, their stairs are still so tall. Whoa. This is so cool. This is the first one we could go inside. Yeah, definitely. This is just so interesting because there's all these different sculptures and carvings. And they're called danzantes, so like the dancers. I guess they think that these are people who were leaders in towns around Montalban who are offered as sacrifices. So they must have just like carved all the different sacrifices that they offered into these rocks. It's so interesting. Whoa. Overall, I would definitely say that this is a worthwhile half day trip really from Oaxaca. Yeah, it doesn't take very long. I'd say if you want more information, definitely do a tour, but yeah. I feel like we often get very overloaded with information on ruined <laughs> tours. But yeah, all in without a tour, it was only about $10 to do this. So definitely a worthwhile thing to do when you're in Oaxaca. Absolutely. I swear there's been a parade every single night, but we don't normally end up in the middle of it. I don't even know what's happening that there. That was an absolute riot. It's there's so fun. Fire oh. More fireworks. <laughs> Car alarms I don't. I honestly don't know. I asked somebody what the deal was with the parade, and they said it was like an anniversary of some secretary, and then there was like two guys, just like the really giant the big guys that looked like they could have been like government secretaries and honestly i have no idea who knows there honestly is so like, many there's parades a parade here every time it. it's every making day. me so excited for day of the dead because if this is how we celebrate on just like a random week <laughs> night day of the dead is gonna be insane absolutely <laughs> 